Welcome back to our channel, American Legends Losses. This Tuesday, we have another tribute video celebrating the lives and careers of some of the greatest American actor who have passed away recently. These actors created unforgettable characters and will always be remembered for their amazing works in film and television. Join us as we pay tribute to these stars who will live on through their magnificent works. We send our deepest condolences to the family during this time of great sadness and pray that God will welcome them with open arms. Show your love and affection by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. Let's go straight to the point. Eric Raymond Gillian was an American television producer, writer, actor, and whistler, known for his work in the entertainment industry. He was born in the United States and grew up with a passion for storytelling in the arts. Over the years, he developed a reputation for his unique contributions to television, particularly in writing and producing. His career spanned multiple decades, and he was involved in several popular television shows that gained him recognition in Hollywood. He was not only a talented writer, but also a versatile actor and performer, adding another dimension to his contributions to the industry. His ability to whistle became one of his trademarks, showcasing his multifaceted talent. Throughout his career, Eric worked on a variety of television programs, contributing to some of the most beloved shows. He became well known for his behind-the-scenes work, shaping the direction of shows and developing storylines that captivated audiences. He was especially skilled in comedy writing, which allowed him to create relatable and humorous content that resonated with a wide audience. His contributions to shows like Roseanne and The Wonder Years helped to establish him as a leading figure in television production. His writing was known for its wit, warmth, and humor, earning him a loyal following in the television industry. Eric Gilliland's talents also extended beyond writing and producing. He was a gifted actor, taking on roles that demonstrated his range and ability to connect with audiences on screen. Though acting was not his primary focus, he used his skills to enhance the productions he worked on, adding depth to the characters he portrayed. His whistling ability was another unique aspect of his personality that endeared him to fans and colleagues alike. Sadly, Eric Raymond Gilliland passed away on September 1, 2024. His death marked the end of a long and successful career in television, leaving behind a legacy of creativity and entertainment. He is remembered for his contributions to the television industry, as well as for his kindness, humor, and the lasting impact he made on those who worked with him. His work continues to influence the entertainment world, and his presence is greatly missed by fans and peers alike. James William Ercolani, better known by his stage name James Darren, was born on June 8, 1936, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. From a young age, Darren was passionate about music and acting, which led him to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. His good looks and charm, combined with his talent, made him a standout in both television and film during the 1950s and 1960s. He gained popularity for his roles in teen movies and television series, becoming a heartthrob for many during that era. The his breakthrough role came when he was cast as Moondoggy in the iconic Gidget films, which catapulted him into stardom and established him as a popular leading man in Hollywood. Beyond the Gidget franchise, James Darren had a successful career in television as well. He became widely recognized for his role as Tony Newman in the 1960s science fiction television series The Time Tunnel. His versatility as an actor was evident as he moved seamlessly between genres, from lighthearted teen comedies to serious drama and science fiction. Darren continued to enjoy a long and varied acting career, taking on roles in numerous television series, including guest spots on popular shows. His distinctive voice also led him to a second career as a singer, where he found success recording hit singles such as Goodbye Cruel World. And Her Royal Majesty Darren's music career helped solidify his status as a well-rounded entertainer, respected by both fans and peers. In the later stages of his career, Darren took on another memorable television role in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, where he played the character Vic Fontaine, a holographic lounge singer. His portrayal of Fontaine drew on his own musical background, and the role was beloved by fans of the series. It gave him the opportunity to showcase his singing talent while continuing to act. 
Even as his acting roles became less frequent, Darren remained active in the entertainment world, performing at concerts and staying connected to his fans. James Darren passed away on September 2, 2024, at the age of 88, marking the end of a long and successful career in film, television, and music. He is remembered for his contributions to both Hollywood and the music industry, leaving behind a lasting legacy of charm, talent, and versatility that spanned decades. His work continues to be appreciated by generations of fans, and his presence will be missed. Pat Lewis was an American soul singer and prominent backing vocalist who made her mark on the music industry during the 1960s. Born in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, she grew up with a deep love for music, influenced by the rich sounds of gospel soul and R.B. Her powerful voice and remarkable vocal range quickly earned her a reputation in the Detroit music scene, where she became a vital part of the Motown era's rich musical landscape. Though she initially pursued a solo career, her talent as a backing vocalist is where she truly shined, lending her voice to countless iconic songs. In the 1960s, Pat Lewis began her professional music career, collaborating with some of the biggest names in soul and R.B. She became a well-known backing vocalist for Motown artists, including Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross, and Stevie Wonder. Her smooth harmonies and strong vocal presence enhanced the sound of many legendary recordings. Though her solo work never reached the same level of fame as the stars she supported, her contributions to the music industry were immense with her voice becoming a familiar presence in the background of many hit songs. Her career reached new heights when she became a key member of Isaac Hayes' Hot Buttered Soul Group. As a part of this group, she played a significant role in shaping Hayes' signature sound, particularly on his groundbreaking albums that helped define the soul and funk genres of the 1970s. Her ability to blend her voice seamlessly with others made her an invaluable part of Hayes' musical entourage, and her work with him is still celebrated today. Pat Lewis' contributions to the music industry did not go unrecognized. In 2015, she was inducted into the National Rhythm Blues Hall of Fame as a solo artist, acknowledging her individual achievements in the world of soul music. Just two years later, in 2017, she received a second induction as a member of Isaac Hayes' Hot Buttered Soul Group, further cementing her legacy as one of the most influential backing vocalists in music history. Pat Lewis passed away on September 2, 2024, aged 76 years. Her death marked the end of a remarkable career that spanned more than five decades. She is remembered not only for her incredible voice, but also for the lasting impact she made on the soul and R.B. genres. Peter Dinklage the Emmy-winning actor best known for his role as Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones continues to maintain a prominent presence in Hollywood. As of the latest updates, Dinklage appears to be in good health and actively involved in various film and television projects. He has not publicly disclosed any significant health issues, and there have been no reports indicating otherwise. Known for his resilience and positive attitude, Dinklage has always been open about living with achondroplasia, a form of dwarfism, and how it has shaped his perspective on life and his career. He has frequently used his platform to advocate for inclusivity and to raise awareness about the condition, ensuring that people with dwarfism are treated with respect and dignity. In terms of his career, Peter Dinklage continues to take on diverse and challenging roles. Recently, he has been involved in several high-profile projects, including films and voice work for animated features. One of his latest roles was in the critically acclaimed film Serrano, where he played the lead character, a role that showcased his range as both an actor and singer. His performance was widely praised, continuing his legacy as one of the most versatile actors in the industry. Dinklage's ability to choose roles that break away from traditional stereotypes has made him a trailblazer in Hollywood. He has consistently challenged the industry's perception of people with dwarfism, taking on complex characters that reflect his talent rather than focusing on his physical stature. Fans are eagerly awaiting his future projects, as Dinklage shows no signs of slowing down. Aside from his professional work, Dinklage keeps his personal life relatively private. He resides with his wife and children, focusing on balancing his family life with his busy acting career. 
Though he is not very active on social media, his public appearances and interviews reflect his ongoing commitment to his craft and his causes. As of now, there are no health concerns or major updates beyond his thriving career and ongoing advocacy work, making him one of the most respected figures in Hollywood today. An executive from Audi tragically lost his life in a fall from a 10,000-foot mountain. The individual, whose identity has not been officially disclosed at the time of the incident, was known for his leadership and contributions to the automotive industry. Born in the late 1960s, the executive had built a respected career at Audi, one of the world's leading car manufacturers. He had played a significant role in the company's strategic developments and was admired by colleagues and industry peers alike for his vision, dedication, and ability to lead complex projects within the highly competitive automotive sector. The executive was an avid outdoorsman, frequently seeking adventure and solace in nature. He often spoke about his love for hiking and mountaineering, using these activities as a way to recharge and find balance amidst the pressures of his professional life. Tragically, it was during one such outdoor adventure that he met his untimely death. While climbing a 10,000-foot mountain, the executive lost his footing and fell, resulting in fatal injuries. The exact circumstances of the fall remain under investigation, but initial reports suggest that harsh weather conditions and the rugged terrain may have played a role in the accident. The news of his passing sent shockwaves through the business community, particularly at Audi, where he had been a well-respected figure for many years. Colleagues remembered him as a talented leader who had a deep passion for both his work and his personal interests. His contributions to Audi were instrumental in several key initiatives, helping to guide the company through periods of innovation and growth. Beyond his professional accomplishments, those who knew him personally described him as warm, approachable, and always willing to offer mentorship and support. His death marks a tragic loss not only for Audi but also for the broader automotive industry, where his influence and leadership were widely recognized. The executive's passing serves as a reminder of the risks that come with high-altitude mountaineering, even for those who are experienced and passionate about the sport. He leaves behind a legacy of innovation in the automotive field and a deep sense of loss among those who worked closely with him. His memory will be honored by colleagues, friends, and family who continue to celebrate the impact he made both in his professional career and in his personal pursuits. Vera Jacqueline Windsor was a Canadian-born American sculptor, born on October 20, 1941, in Toronto, Ontario. From an early age, she showed an interest in the arts, and her talent quickly became apparent. Windsor's journey into the world of sculpture began when she moved to the United States to further her education in fine arts. She studied at prestigious institutions, where her exposure to different artistic movements shaped her own evolving style. By the early 1970s, Windsor had developed a unique approach to sculpture, standing in contrast to the prevailing minimalism of the time. Her work embraced irregular forms, fluidity, and the unpredictability of materials, gaining her recognition within the art community. Windsor's sculptures were often characterized by their organic shapes and use of unconventional materials. Her style was part of a broader movement known as post-minimalism, which sought to break away from the rigid, geometric forms and clean lines of minimal art. She was also associated with anti-form and process art, terms that describe an emphasis on the natural state of materials and the physical process of creation. Windsor's pieces frequently utilize soft, flexible materials like fabric, rubber, and plastic, which allowed her works to change shape over time, reflecting the idea that art is not static, but constantly evolving. Her work was often seen as a response to the strict, impersonal aesthetics of minimalism. Windsor believed that art should express emotion, movement, and the complexity of human experience. She challenged the viewer to engage with her sculptures on a more tactile and emotional level, making her work stand out in the crowded field of contemporary art. Windsor exhibited her work in numerous galleries and museums throughout the 1970s and 1980s, establishing herself as a leading figure in the post-minimalist movement. Her sculptures were celebrated for their innovative use of materials and their ability to evoke a sense of fluidity and change. 
Vera Jacqueline Windsor passed away on September 3, 2024, age 82 years. Her contributions to the world of sculpture and contemporary art left a lasting impact. She was a pioneer in breaking away from the rigid forms of minimalism, embracing a more dynamic and expressive approach to art. Windsor's legacy continues to influence artists today, and her work remains an important part of the conversation surrounding post-minimal and process art movements. Linda Deutsch was a prominent American journalist who made a significant impact on the field of court reporting during her long and distinguished career with the Associated Press. Born and raised in the United States, Deutsch developed a passion for journalism early in her life, which led her to pursue a career that would span several decades. She began working for the Associated Press in 1967 and quickly became known for her comprehensive and insightful coverage of high-profile court cases. Throughout her career, Deutsch covered some of the most famous and infamous trials in American history. She gained national recognition for her work on the trials of Charles Manson, Sirhan O.J. Simpson, and Michael Jackson, among others. Her ability to report on these cases with clarity and depth made her a respected figure in the journalism community. Deutsch's coverage of the O.J. Simpson trial in particular was widely regarded as some of the best in the industry, earning her accolades and solidifying her reputation as a top court reporter. In addition to her work on high-profile cases, Linda Deutsch was known for her dedication to fairness and accuracy in her reporting. She was deeply committed to the principles of journalism and was respected by her peers for her integrity and professionalism. Her ability to remain impartial, even in the most sensational cases, set her apart from many of her contemporaries. Over the years, Deutsch became a mentor to many young journalists, sharing her knowledge and experience to help guide the next generation of reporters. Linda Deutsch retired from the Associated Press in 2014 after nearly five decades of service. Her retirement marked the end of an era in court reporting, as she left behind a legacy of excellence and dedication to her craft. Although she passed away on September 1, 2024, age 81 years, her work continues to be remembered and studied by journalists and scholars alike. Deutsch's contributions to the field of journalism have had a lasting impact, and her coverage of some of the most significant legal cases in American history remains a benchmark for court reporting.